It's in the very top. The key to the vault and the shroud. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You will shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs>
I'm so relieved to have found you, Harry. I fear my upcoming meeting is going to be disrupted. Strike breakers, maybe, or police spies. Ruffians who fear the march of progress. Fear not, Mr. Marx. I'll look after you. I worry that any agitation will incite terrible violence, so please remove troublemakers without attracting any attention. Wunderbar. Thank you. I must prepare, but I will see you inside shortly. and imports. Oh, I'm 
considered right in the relations of private persons shall be recognized as the supreme law governing labor in this country. The struggle for such a policy is embraced in the universal struggle for the emancipation of the working class. And so I say to you, proletarians of all lands, unite in order to free the workers, the cooperative system ah. on a national scale. Be furthered by national means. For their part, the lords of the land and the lords of capital will continue steadily to use their political privileges for the defense and perpetuation of their monopoly. Instead of furthering the emancipation. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is adjourned. Obstacle in the way. Apart from Mr. Marx, him we want to have words with. Stay behind the lectern, Mr. Marx. This is what I'm here for. Here we go again. a great service for the workers of London. I'm confident the reforms we seek cannot be far over the mm. horizon. I don't suppose you'd formally join the Workers' Party? Mm. I'm not much for politics. <laughs> He's not much for anything that requires deep thought. Does that mean you'll join, Comrade Evie? I'm afraid I have other responsibilities. Honorary memberships, perhaps. You don't give up, do you? We seem to have that in common. Auf Wiedersehen, my friends. Nice to see you. Come, 
Take a look at what I've managed to conjure up today. There must be something of interest here. I hope everything was to your satisfaction. Oh, Jacob, Evie, it's you. Thank goodness. Experimenting, are we, Alec? Correct. And looking a bit frazzled. Nerves. It's those great oafs Starrett keeps sending round to coax me. He is offering a ridiculous amount of money. Alec, you're not thinking of jumping ship, are you? Never. I've been working in something in case they get too insistent. Uh, it's meant to stun an assailant, should the need arise. Are you certain that it works? Uh, not as such. I've made three of them with varying degrees of acidity and whatnot. Oh, one must be the right formula. Let's find some Staric lackeys to target then, shall we? <laughs> Speaking of Staric, he is still transmitting false information. We could simply destroy his transmitters. His company's too well guarded. Um, the bombs will help, but it would be awkward to produce bombs that potentially do not stun. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like opportunity has come knocking. <laughs> Oh, dear. You never looked so angry before. Stand clear, Alec. Let us instead play a little linguistic game with them. Um, take the bombs and climb onto the roof. Uh, when I say the name of uh, a fruit, toss one near the thugs. 
Right then. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I nearly forgot. Um, slip these into your boots and you will henceforth be immune to all voltaic discharge. I think. Gentlemen, I, I would ask you in for tea, but I'm afraid I'm running rather late. Enough of the nice teas. We've come to smash your place up, ain't we, Bess? You got one of them telly what's it's in here, ain't ya? You? You've been reading messages from the Steric Company. That is as untrue as the notion that the Steric Telegraph Company is emitting impartial information, sir. Come again? Your employer's promises are nothing but hot air. His operations are about to turn pear shaped. Smart Alex. What's you going on about air and pears, Hawk? Oh, I don't know, I feel rough. Agility of a dollop of donkey's apples. <laughs> I'll have no more of your children. Apples. I think he's trying to be funny. Oh, you dropped a no one, Bill. You little sod. Well, I ain't me, Bez. Oh, 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 me, stop it now. Oh, oh. Those rascals throwing stink bombs again. It happens all the time around here. Right. Tell us where you keep that telly, what's it? I'll count to three. Three? Well, well. Let's see how far you get. One. Do you really think I would keep it here? Do you see a cable? A telegraph without a cable is about as useful as a bell without a clapper. I'll give you a bleeding clapper. Well, bless my boots, you're as purple as a plum. Good show, Alec. 
thanks to you, Evie. Your mere presence gave me courage and resolve I never knew I had. I'm glad I could help. Now it's time to shut down Stark's empire of propaganda. Found that. The longer we can keep Starrick from spewing out false information, the more we can awaken the truth about his operations. I agree. The sooner we can get there, the quicker we can act. Would you believe my mother says there are still some wives in her street that swear by that soothing setup? So I took it upon myself to tell my neighbors the truth about the obnoxious draft. That's good, Alec. You can't go round to every household in London town. No, I wasn't always welcome. Which shows how false information can be... It's difficult to stamp out as fish wives of the vanity of Billingsgate. Or vermin at Smithfield. But if we can eradicate the source that continually feeds such detrimental trash, then little by little the truth will take the upper hand and the sham will be flushed out. That's why we're here. We will have to content without being detected now. I shall stand them while you get inside. I shall destroy not one, but three parts of the transmitter. You'll be as good as dancing before a public toilet without a fairy. Easy. I see. This is becoming rather perilous, to say the least. I'm with you! Faster if you can. I see. This is becoming rather perilous to say the least. You are 
Don't be stirring up no more trouble. My dears, Jacob E.V., thanks are once again in order for supporting what is most dear to me and to our cause, freedom of speech. It's a blessing that you employ your genius for the common good, Alec. However, I suggest you vacate your workshop. No need. Not now you've given me sacks full of courage. And besides, what with my little devices, I have all the protection I need. Uh, should you find yourselves with a moment to spare, do a drop by. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sir, the engine's just pulled into Waterloo. Once Stark's men arrive, they're gonna unload the train. Well, not if the train has already left. Assemble a team at Charing Cross. I'll send the engines there for you to recover.
Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. We will get you into the central station very soon. Where the hell is that schedule? Central station's closed. Attaway's orders. You saw these blueprints, did you not? Were you aware of this floor? Come on, Chief, this is where are you? Absurd. I'm going to miss my train. Direction comes from the station, Chief. Once the order comes through, we will send you on your way to the central station. Right, I'm coming to deal with you. Perhaps I should thin this herd. What a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses.
When coldness or deceit shall slight the beauty now they prize, and deem it but a faded light which beams within your eyes. When hollow hearts must wear a mask. Mr. Sterrick. I told you not to disturb me! To break your own to see such a moment I but ask that you remember me that you remember me Crawford. Her luster, stripped by the hands of that savage. He must be brought to justice. Pearl would not want justice. Pearl would want vengeance. Your passion is most welcome, Miss Thorne. But we cannot let our emotions disrupt the lawful structures of society. If we do that, the enemy wins. It shall happen in the shadows. Miss Fry will hang from the gallows, and I will flay her brother as he comes to save her. I suppose it must be done. Take no chances. Increase the Templar presence in London. We alone protect this city of light. Yes, Crawford. And then we shall enter the vault and cast aside the shadows together. A letter for me? What have we here? Boiler. This dredge character's meddling will be the death of us. He was loitering around the exchange today, asking far too many questions about the bank. Should he discover my plan, you will face a far worse fate than losing your job. Signed, Plutus. So this Plutus is Starek's banker, hmm? I wager dredge will lead me to him. While you're out and about, do attempt not to destroy modern medicine or the London Transportation Network. Don't make me laugh. Innocent lives hang in the balance. They depend on this city. I'm not the one who let Lucy Thorne walk away. A mistake I intend to rectify immediately. A letter. For me?
I will not build a single bus for you criminals. Oh, you'll do as we say, Bailey. Or we're gonna have to pay you and your family a visit. You leave them be. Deep breaths. They're gone. No, not for long. Help! Help! My kids! Help! I don't know what to do. My kids are Faster! Tell me why you've got the gliders after you. The city's been turned upside Come down on. since Attaway Transport and the Milner Company went belly up. With no one to fill their shoes, the gangs made their move. Well done, Jimmy Cooper. As is Bailey, the only omnibus builder in the city, they are demanding that I work for them. I know good men who want to form a united transport company. What is it they say in America? For the people, by the people? That is our intention for the London General Omnibus Company. But those thugs got hold of the deed to Attaway Transport. We need it to begin our company. Mr. Bailey, I am Miss Fry. Atta girl. Slow down, you animal!
I sent Ross men a message. You and your family are safe. Oh, you are blooming brilliant. The founding members of the London General Omnibus Company. Good moral men. All of them. We'll have buses rolling before you know it. Thank you, Miss Fry. My pleasure. Versicolor, commonly known as Harlequin. I didn't know you had a twin sister, Mr. Fry. Evie Fry, sir. It's a pleasure. Usually I would reciprocate the sentiment, Miss Fry, but today I'm afraid nothing will bring me pleasure. What's troubling you, sir? I am used to people challenging my ideas. In fact, I live for it, the cut and thrust of spirited debate. Lately, however, attacks against my reputation have taken a darker turn. Threats of violence against my person and against my colleagues. I do not wish anyone to be hurt because of my research. You help me with steric syrup. I am in your debt. We help each other, sir. My brother and I will make sure that you can continue your work in peace. What do you know of bones? Only a few of their names learned from books.
meaning of this? Mr. Darwin has sent me to ensure you reach him safely, with your cargo intact. Just act naturally. So, how is your father? By which I mean my dear brother Frank, with whom I grew up, of course. Oh, splendid! It's wonderful to hear! I'll do my best not to call attention to how remiss he was in forgetting to warn me about the delicate situation which brings me here today. Do you see him? Someone's finding a needle in the haystack. Wouldn't hurt to know what the bugger looks like. Sorry, just that, Doctor. I should deliver this to Mr. Darwin. hasn't stopped pounding. You have it? Wonderful. But where is Dr. Schwartz? I'm afraid he was intercepted, sir, in Germany. However, I have recovered the fossil. Dear Lord, I should tell you, I was recently approached by men who sought to purchase all my research on the condition I work only for them. Obviously, I refused. Scientific knowledge cannot be bought. It belongs to everyone. Let these villains do their worst.